This is Dave Kahn here with ExtremeMetalDreams.com. I'm sitting here with one of the guys from Wretched Steven, I believe. Or right? Andrew. Andrew. Steven, that it had to do with signings and stuff. I play uh, bass. Yeah. So you guys, uh, just in June, you guys dropped your album, mm -hmm. uh, Cannibal. It's pretty goddamn heavy. And, oh, yeah, yeah, man. We it's got some power behind it, We man. definitely went for the heavier approach. I think it was... Uh, um, last album was a little techy, uh, Son of Perdition, the one before it. It was like more kind of techy and progressive, but we also only had a short period of time to write it. We had like, I think it was like two months to write and record it. So we just got that out, and then we were doing some festival runs after that, so we just wanted to finish it. But this one, we, we just took the entire winter, we're all on the same page, we got Joel, our original guitar player, back, and, and just clicked right off the bat. And, uh, and yeah, we were just trying to make it just a good death metal album, just something really heavy, straightforward. We wanted to kind of go back to the fundamentals, you know, not go too crazy, just keep it catchy, keep it heavy, keep it, you know, straightforward, and, you know, heavy as fuck. There, you know, that's the whole thing, is it's all about the love of metal and yeah, getting it yeah. out there the right way, what we have inside us and expressing it. Exactly, yeah. You know, whether it be on stage, whether it be on disc, wherever, we, we all want to push the metal. And, uh, you know, you guys are on this, like you said, you've done some festivals. Now you guys are on Mayhem Fest. Yeah, this is the biggest thing we've done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What is it for you guys? What does it really mean to you guys to be on oh, such a major festival? Oh, and man, it just it means so much. It's, uh, I've had friends over the last few years playing it and stuff, so I'd come out and hang out and stuff. And it just, you know, when I would come and see what's going on I realized right off the bat a couple years ago when I first went out that it's like a really cool family vibe here like it's, it feels like a summer camp almost and like every tour bus traveling cabin. camp yeah. yeah it's a traveling camp and everyone's calling it camp mayhem right now but <laughs> so that's the vibe I got so I just wanted to come out and just have fun and party but, but I think you know since I was a kid it was really about you know just I had my dream to play these type of crowds and get the exposure so the second that mayhem you know was in the when we found out we were doing it I was Incredibly stoked, mainly because we were just got done recording too, and and, uh, and it was just perfect setup for it. You know, album came out right before it, and we had promo this, and I think the majority of the kids I meet found out about us by seeing us on that stage, and uh, and they're eating it up. It seems like you know every day they're loving it, and I'm just so stoked, man, living the dream. It's a rough, rough ride, but I hope <laughs> yeah, still right. Well. You know, yeah. We, we definitely choose a love for something that's not going to, you know, guarantee yeah, yeah. make us rich. Too bad I'm not doing country or pop or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of the bands on this tour that you just have to see night every night? And Cannibal really Corpse is definitely, I would, you know, just a huge inspiration. I love it. Everybody. That, that seems to be everybody's yeah. favorite thing yeah, to see was, is Cannibal Corpse, Alex and those boys. Yeah. You so know, this nice is the second too, time that they've been on Mayhem mm -hmm. and... They carry a lot of weight when they, they hit do. that stage that yeah. people just don't realize. Just Oh, I don't think any... I didn't even realize it was going to be that fucking powerful. Like, uh, yesterday, I just I, I watched it from behind their stage, and the day before, I watched it in the crowd, and, and both sides was just so much... I got goosebumps. It was just so much energy, and they're just so... Metal, no gimmicks, just fucking playing. <laughs> I, I have to admit, I'm jealous of all of you guys that get to go and watch them on a daily basis. It's been years since I've been on the road and get to watch Are you going to get to see us today? Play. No. Oh, this will be the first time I'm in the same vicinity since they were signed in the very beginning in the 80s oh. that I have actually been at the venue with Cannibal Corpse and not get to watch them play. Oh, no. That sucks. But you know what? You know, being a former tour manager and, and switching, you know, the lifestyle and doing the photos and the interviews and having the site is also... You know, oh, yeah, it's been right it's been a total different. You know, I started off as a fan, then I became a singer in a band, a guitar player, then singer. Quit playing guitar because we got tired of the ego. You know, so I, I learned through the years, you know, as a fan, that that's the biggest thing that is most important. Yeah. yeah. So what is it like to meet all these fans nonstop and see the pit oh, just go I'm, insane? Uh, I am so grateful for every single one of them, and I let them all know that you know anyone who. Who's watching? I always try and you know find the like, people who are really into it, the ones who know the lyrics, or the ones who just seem like they're having a great time. And I always, if they don't come up to us, I'll go up to them and I'll let them know. Thank you for being out there. Man. Thank you for listening and checking it out. 
And, uh, and we're always, our band in particular, like every show when we're on the smaller tours and stuff, we, we're just hanging out everywhere. Like, I want to be in the crowd and I want to meet everybody. Yeah, you guys were in Seattle, what? Uh, um, we were there uh, like a month ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. came and watched you guys play. Oh, yeah. And I was supposed to get an interview with you guys, but something happened to where you guys were. Was that with Havoc? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I've known Havoc and them since oh, yeah, 2005 when I was the tour manager for Brick Bath. Oh, really? Oh, out of San Diego. That's, dude, that's Havoc like, boys are just. They're, they're fun as fuck, man. You know, so, we had a lot of fun in Denver with them when we played the Gothic Theater in 2005. Yeah, like and they, were ju- they had just got signed. Yeah. And, uh,. It was actually pretty fun because, you know, them being a local band there and Brick Bath being, uh, you know, basically like a C national, yeah, and really pushing themselves before their split, and uh, it was cool to to go back into a garage after playing the venue. And we all just sat there and drank and played even more. Yeah, <laughs> you know, after yeah. four hours of being in a venue playing with all the bands, then we're, yeah, you know, no, they, we couldn't get enough of it. Yeah, they, uh, I, Steven and Joel, our guitar players, them and Grace and Dave, like every day they're just sitting backstage just doodling and like, trading riffs and little, you know, licks and stuff every day. And then, uh, uh, especially Reese, their guitar player. I don't know if he was, he, I don't think he was in a band when uh, you played with him in 2005. No. But, uh, yeah, that guy's... He came just there, shortly man. after. Same with, like, yeah. Bonded by Blood. Yeah. Uh, they changed Jose for another Jose. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was about to say, I was like, I met a Jose. <laughs> yeah, they, you know, in fact, when those guys uh, first got signed to, uh, what was it, uh, Earache Records okay, yeah. is who they first signed with. And uh, I actually had them living with me for pretty much two and a half, three weeks yeah. as they did the Northwest. And we would just drive out of my place and then party at the oh, lake nice. and go back Good. out to the Those show. Those are great guys, too. We've been on yeah. time before. Yeah, yeah. They're, uh, I've got some old video footage of them in my house on my half stacks. Just Were they like kids? Because I feel like Yeah, they were, they were all between 18 to 20. <laughs> in fact, we went on tour with them that they our, looked like they were 17. Yeah, our big old thing that we had that is we got into doing the housekeeping. Uh, <laughs> like running around on tour everywhere we'd go, housekeeping, housekeeping. <laughs> you know, and everybody be looking at all these guys, you know, we're yeah. all tatted out, long hair, running yeah, around. Guys. <laughs> and they're all like, what are they mean, housekeeping? Yeah. <laughs> so what are some of the cities that you're really excited to see? Um, I would say... L.A. was a big one that we already played. Uh, just, you know, it's the kickoff, and it's a lot of, you know, our sponsors and endorsement guys were out, so it was a it was a good way to finally meet a lot of people and do some networking, but at the same time, it was just kind of the excitement of, of it all. We haven't played crowds this big, so that was a big one. Um, I'm kind of like a hometown show in Virginia. We're playing at Jiffy Lube, and that's... Uh, that's a good one for me because it's like about I would say like 45, 50 minutes outside of DC, and I'm I'm from DC, even though our band's from Charlotte. Uh, I just go to love Charlotte, man. Yeah, me too. And Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah. I haven't really spent too much time in Jacksonville. Uh, I don't know if the club's still there, but there was a rock. It was rock something. There was a big venue that was there by the Marine Base. Man, that was just uh, phenomenal. In fact, that was. In 2005, we did that spot right there, and we—it was insane. That Jackson. whole city, yeah. Wait, what was it called? Rock something. It was really humongous. Because we played the, uh, we we decided to do a one-off at a burger joint. Yeah. There in Jacksonville, because we had three days off, and we're like, oh, okay, yeah, we'll come play it for nothing. Man. Yeah. We don't care. Yeah. So we were sitting so, out up on a floor. You know, what is it like for you to go from doing? Venues of like that, of floor shows, somewhat oh, of a stage yeah. show, and then you go on to such a big stage. And it's totally different. Uh, they, they both have their good sides and bad sides. Like I actually, I really like playing like on the floor with people just right in front of you. You know, you get a good energy. A whole personal thing. Yeah, yeah, it's right there. And then, um, and then you know, smaller venues always like it when the crowd's just right there on the stage. So you're just you know right on top of them. You're in their face. But um, but then you go play these huge shows and it's like uh it's just like a huge adrenaline rush because it's people everywhere and they're all 
going nuts. And everyone at the, in any festival is just having a good time. You know, it's like that festival vibe. So even if you have like a bad day and you're having a bad show or something, you can't not get into it because everyone's moshing and just going crazy. Even if you suck at that point, you know. But, uh, <laughs> No, yeah, everyone's I can't see any bands really sucking. No, not on this tour. Yeah, I think not on, not on just, something like you know, this. Down, for, for you to be put on that bill says a lot about you guys and you know and what the industry thinks of you. Thanks. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping. Yeah. You know that you get some respect. And what are some of the things that you guys have planned after Mayhem tour um, to finish out 2014? We have, we have a couple tours that are in the works. Uh, the plan is to get to Europe, so I think we're going to do a, a support slot in the States in the fall, and then in the wintertime, I think we're going over to Europe. Can't, I, they're, they're not confirmed or anything, so I don't know if they're actually going to happen, but that's the plan is you know, get to Europe. So, yeah. So what's it like to have a label that's pushing you guys so hard and pushing all their bands the way that they do oh, and the whole victory stage? Yeah, it's great, man. It's uh, dude, We wouldn't be here without them, that's for sure. You know, like they... They got our foot in the door, and they got it even farther. The door's open now with this, and now you know we just gotta kick ass and you know sell it and you know, take advantage of everything about this. But but it's been awesome, you know. We've been uh, uh, and the Victory guys are here too. We have some reps here, and you know they're our good buds too. So it's awesome to just have a guy to touch base with and always communicate, and, and they're always looking out for us. Anything we need, and I see our posters everywhere here too, you know. And, saying when we're doing our signing when we're playing and every time i'm walking by people they're always i always see them looking at the posters and stuff so it's working it's bringing them out and um yeah they're, they're i think like all the guys that work from too that work with us are you know our good buds now so it's a good trust that's going on got the whole family like you're saying the yeah, whole yeah, traveling yeah, family vibe yeah yeah two eric's eric bunnings and eric richter yeah <laughs> our, our buds that's cool you know you don't really, you know, me and Mike, you were talking about how Victory and all them really have that street sense still. And I love that. The, the, they're a label that has really sense. been. I love that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. We'll get, we'll, like, on um, most tours, we'll get to a venue and there'll be a street team rep there and they'll just help us with anything we need, promoting stuff. And they're always sending people out. They're always sending flyers out. And it's good. I love that. And I feel like the scene and most music scenes, not just metal, are kind of losing that old school street team out on the internet. It's all the promo. Yeah, that is true. That's something that a lot of people still, you know, here it is 15 years later, and the internet's really changed us from doing everything that we've ever done. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, everyone's still trying to figure it out. You know, um, like Mike, you know, we were talking about different stuff on how some bands are. You know, even lip syncing nowadays because they're using so much sampling and so yeah, much that the they time, have to I, run. I see it all the time. I saw Tool play, and I'm pretty sure he had like his. Uh, but he, he, they do it so well though. But he had his like harmonies and stuff in there. And I was even thinking that like you can do anything you want. But I like it when I see you know the everything just being produced right there. And I uh, basically you know, like you guys are on that stage. You guys are all about. Yeah, everything's there. Yeah. 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 Like, if, if we, I see a lot of times, you know, I can understand if you lose a guitar player or something and you have two guitar parts and you don't have time to fill someone in and, you know, get some guitars going or something, but but if that's part of your band and it's and it's playing with you, I think it's cheap, you know, it's playing with back track. Well, this was great kicking back with you, man. Yeah, Andrew. you too, man. Um, Dude, What's I, uh, man? can't, Killer can't believe album. that fucking story, though. <laughs> you're here and you're you live and kicking it, man. So. I, they, I've died four times, and I'm a Cougar fan. I'm Washington State Cougar oh, being yeah? born and raised yeah. up here. But one thing I will say is the Huskies has the... You know, the University of Washington has one of the greatest medical hospitals you can ever go to. And I've worked with three specialists that have... Uh, 